Federal workers that telework or remote work from home, they've been accused of fraud by a senator. And she's not the only one. This issue has been getting a lot of attention as more and more government employees are working from home. Specifically, she said what really gets under her skin was so many federal employees get Washington DC pay, but live in lower cost areas, which is true. This does happen. And to give you a better idea of the situation, take a look at this. Let's take a GS-14 step three in DC. Doesn't matter the agency, that person would have a salary of $141,000 a year. Okay, so let's say a person named Bob decided to live in a lower cost area. The pandemic happened, everyone's working from the house. So Bob jumps on a plane, he goes over to Mississippi. Maybe he goes to Mississippi because he has family, maybe he has friends there, whatever the case, he decides, I'm gonna start living in Mississippi. And for the next three or four years, that's where he stays. The problem with that is he is still earning that DC pay. Also, a GS-14 Step 3 in Mississippi has a salary of $124,000 a year. So that means Bob's making $17,000 extra every year. And that equates to about $1,400 extra every month. And he's just pocketing. I don't know what he's doing with it. Maybe he's getting a luxury car. Maybe he's putting, you know, paying off student loans. I don't know what he's doing. But that's the issue. The fact that he's getting $1,400 extra. And also, that's taxpayer money. So that hits a lot of different pain points for a lot of different people. The senator specifically said, you federal employees who are out there, we're coming after you. And that sounds pretty serious. Thankfully, I'm not one of those people. I still live around the DC area. I've been living here for years. Now, she has already taken action behind her words. She sent out 24 letters to OIGs, to different agencies, demanding a closer look at remote work policies, at telework policies. And she wants to ensure that people are getting paid the right amount. These OIG audits, they're no fun for anybody who's involved. I've been involved in a few OIG audits. You have the auditor there that's requesting dozens, if not hundreds of documents. They're interviewing this person, they're interviewing that person. It is a very time intensive process, but it looks like they're gonna try to figure out what's going on with these agencies. In my opinion, the end goal for this Senator and a lot of politicians around DC, the ultimate end goal is to have everyone come back. Everyone come back as if 2020 never happened, you know? Have as much people as we can in the buildings, except there's one exception. If you have high levels of talent, I'm talking if you're a cybersecurity professional, if you're a software developer, well then that's part of the incentive package in order to recruit, in order to retain. So they do want to give certain people telework and remote work, they just do not want it to be for everyone. Here's another thing to consider. Here's the deal with telework. For decades, people have been driving from low cost areas to come work in a high cost area. People have been coming from West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and all these other areas. They're driving two, three hours just to come to DC, just so they, they could earn a higher salary. So they had their nice houses, nice plot of land. Maybe they have a ranch, a country home, and then they come and they suffer with the traffic to command that higher salary. It's been happening. It's gonna to continue to happen. And for people who can tolerate the commute, look at your average house in West Virginia. You're probably looking at 200, 250,000 in a lot of different areas. But you come anywhere near one hour of DC, you're looking at 600, 700,000 if you're lucky. A lot of the houses, you know, you wanna get, let's say 20 minutes, 15 minutes from DC, you're looking at over a million dollars. One agency's OIG, they already uncovered that the agency paid millions of dollars for unpaid work. Check this out, there was a whistleblower who called out a fellow worker who never shows up to work and whose work is garbage. It's clear this guy wasn't happy at all, but this whistleblowing complaint, it initiated an investigation and OIG determined one guy was paid $25,000. He wasn't working. He was playing golf and he was going to happy hour. Unfortunately, the agency for this specific incident, this was the USPTO, which is the US Patent and Trademark Office. It's one of my favorite agencies. When people ask me, what is your top three agencies? USPTO is always in the top three. They're located in Old Town Alexandria in Northern Virginia. 
and I've heard nothing but great things. This is the first time I actually heard something negative about the agency. Now, when it comes to the remote work and the telework issue, I can see how agencies are going to be pressured to be a little bit more strict when it comes to, to granting out this type of uh, arrangement to its workers. There's already an agreement. When you telework for an agency, they make you sign there's a multiple page documents, like three, four different pages, and they, they want to make sure you have high speed internet. They want to make sure that you're going to be focused. So there is an agreement in place, but I think it's going to be more stringent. I think that it's going to be uh, a little bit less wiggle room when it comes to extending telework to workers. Because a lot of people, like I mentioned, they don't want to see it. They don't like it. All right, if you're still looking for a federal government job, there have been a couple of agencies recently that have accelerated their hiring. They're trying to hire more and more people. If you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.